What's going on guys? No guys there, welcome back to another video. This would be a video about fever points. Uh, when to use them, the most efficient time to use them, how to get the best return for your money, the best return index uh, in FIFA 20 when it comes out and how to make the most money from using the, the smallest amount of FIFA points in general and kind of a basic buying guide. The most important thing is if you do buy FIFA points, make sure if you spend above obviously Let's say you're going to buy above £15 worth of FIFA points or $15 worth. You might as well just get EA access. You get 10% off um, all FIFA points in, in the store. So obviously, if you're going to spend, if you're going to be spending £1,000 or £500, not that I condone it, but let's just say you are, then obviously get EA access. Now, the most important thing you're probably going to ask me, be asking is, do you buy a gold pack or do you buy... So obviously, when the game comes out, let's say early access, you have a choice. Um... You can either buy a gold. You can either buy a premium gold gold pack, a gold pack, um, a draft token, online or offline. Now it should be narrowed into two, three cat, three. The gold pack's not worth it. It should be narrowed into premium gold pack, drafts, and uh, offline and online, basically. So draft and pack. Now, generally speaking, the premium gold pack. It's not worth it. Now, obviously, the probability is this is for people tw for 19, should I say? I can't shift for 20 for obvious reasons. But let's just say, for example, an 82. Now, let's just say I'm gonna open one pack. Let's just say we spend 150 people points. Let's just say I know I bought any coins, but let's just assume this is the pack that you buy when the game comes out. This is what you're gonna be expecting. For I think this probably costs what about one pound seventy. So let's say I get this gill guy, right? Let's say it's here for 20. Let's say this is the pack that I get. So. Roughly, if I quick sell this entire pack, I'm looking at what 1.6 coins. So, as you can see already, look, the average pack is going to be like this. Okay, I might get a kit worth nothing, I might get somebody's consumables worth nothing again. A contracts be worth about 200 when the game comes out. Now, I might get these players. Now, this guy, when the game comes out, because he's got dead pace, he might go for 1k maybe. This guy, probably nothing when the game comes out. A couple of, really like 1k. Because this guy's a centre mid. Got decent pace. He might go for 2k, maybe. Maybe 2, 3k. Now, generally speaking, in packs, there's no guarantee. If you look at the right hand side, it says triple the rare players, was, uh, triple the rares of a standard gold pack, a mix of 12 items, including players and consumables, three rares. There's a chance, I think, you can get just all the rares being consumables and you might get a low-rated player. But the only savior that there is is that when a game comes out, the average price of, like, let's say, any player is much more higher. Now, I'm going to take you back to FIFA 19. FIFA 19 came out. An example was when I, I used to pack players like, for example, Seri. Now, Seri is a player, he's 82 rated. Now, obviously, now he costs like 1K in FIFA 19. But when FIFA 19 came out, this card costed, I think, 15K in the first week. Now, why? Well, for obvious reasons, he's a very good starter card. He's got a decent stats. He's a well-rounded guy, Premier League. He costed 15K. Now, obviously, if you buy FIFA points in the beginning of the year, which is the most efficient time to buy them, if you if you buy if you pack this guy, he can go 15k. And obviously, if you if you pack this guy in any other time after maybe November time, he's only going to be 1k, maybe 2k, maybe when there's an SBC in particular, he might be 5k, maybe. But generally speaking, the most expensive this card will ever be is when the game comes out. That's why mathematically it makes sense to get the best return index early on in the game because these guys, I'm I'm not saying that. 84 rated, I'm saying the 82 rated, 81 rated players, these guys are quality cards are worth a lot of money. You see what I'm saying? Another example is like, for example, Farman. So Farman is a non-rare card, right? So there's a good chance you could pack him, right? Now, when the game comes out, right, let's just, let's just say he's still a non-rare. Is any not on the market? Now, let's say Gold Farman, right? Non-rare, right? Now, right now, I think he's got... Because an SPC is going for 3K. But generally speaking, he would, for the whole year, has been 700 coins. 800 coins, maybe max, apart from the beginning of the year. But when the game comes out, this card's like 10K. His price is higher now because an SPC. But generally speaking, this card is 10K. It's the same with Fred. If those you remember Fred in FIFA 19 when the game came out, this guy in the second week was 35 to 40K. 
Ryan Ives about as I said um, he's a bit high because of SPCs but, but but this guy was genuinely 35 to, and this is not hard to pack it's only 80 rated, 82 rated card that's why it's it's more feasible to spend your, pack, your money early on in the game now it comes to the big question is do you buy the packs or do you buy the draft now this is my honest opinion when you play FIFA 20 every FIFA game is completely different now, if you're genuinely um, a proper goal to play and above, I mean, not by abusing mechanics, you're genuinely a goal to play in most FIFAs, then have a go with draft. Because even if you win one, or I think if you win two games, I think you'll make more money than buying two premium gold packs. Simple. Number one, you're, you, it's a chance you can get better packs. For example, you might get a 15k pack, etc., etc. You could even get a draft token back. Two, you will you like, you can experience playing the game, have fun with playing with top players. You can obviously with the draft, you can get players like Neymar, whatever. Have fun with that. And three, more importantly, you're going to be playing and getting better at the game. And more importantly, you'll be mo um, earning money for your objectives. You know, for example, the milestone just be for twenty, um, and you know, just match coins in general. So that's why it's worth doing the draft. It's going to be much more fun. If you spend, for example, like, I don't know, let's say you get 20,000 FIFA points. I would say spend 15, I would say spend them all in draft, but let's just say you want to spit it out. I would say at the very least, if you're spending, unless, unless you're spending over 10K FIFA points, spend at least 70% of them on draft, in my opinion, if you're gold two and above. Now, if you're gold two and below, you have two options. Either play the single player draft, which the rewards are not as good as online draft. There's no doubt about that, but it'll be much easier. The reason why is, generally speaking, all the pro players and a lot of the good players, they all, for example, like if I was by FIFA points, I would bang out the online draft. Because if I get to the final, I can get a 40k, I can get a rare mega pack, I can get a rare jumbo rare players, but I can get anything that I, there's, there's a big chance I can get anything FIFA 20. So... That's why everyone's sweating, everyone's trying hard. Now, I said, if you're a gold two player and, and maybe even a gold one and you, you really don't like the game, you're feeling it's not really in your in your field, then get a single player draft. It's probably still better. If, if you get three wins or more, it's probably better with a single player draft if you get three wins or more than buying the packs. And basically, that's kind of it. And I said, if if you're like kind of gold three and below and you know, you let's say you play, if you 20 comes out, you play a couple of rival games, and you think, you know, this game is so different, I can't handle it, I can't hack it, then probably just buy packs. But obviously, as I said, it's going to give you the best advantage. A lot Now, let me get made this clear. For the interactive RTG, I'm obviously not going to spend people points, um, obviously, at all. I might spend it on my main account for draft, for content-wise, but my RTG, don't worry, is fully poor man. The interactive one I'm doing with you guys, that's fully poor man, Road to Glory. But generally speaking, that's why it's best to buy you know, spend your money on packs. Don't wait for team of the year. You can wait for team of the year. There's no chance. There's no even guarantee you'll make your money. A lot of people would be like, "Oh, should I spend a hundred pound now? Then wait for team of the year." Don't, because when team of the year comes out, that same seri card that you just saw, right? Or this, this, let's say that seri card that you saw, right? After team of the year, do you know how much this guy's going to be costing during team of the year? He'll barely cost one k coins during team of the year. That I can guarantee you. But at the beginning of the year, it'll cost fifteen k. So why would you want to wait for Team of the Year? You can be like, okay, there's a chance I can pack, I don't know, a Team of the Year player. But let's say you don't pack any Team of the Year, which happens quite a lot. You're going to risk £100. You might as well spend all the money earlier on than save it. you get the best advantage. And more importantly, you get the better... If if you spend more money now, let's say FIFA points, right? Let's say you were to buy FIFA points. Let's say you were. If you spend the money now... You're going to get a better team. You're going to get better foot champs ranking because you've got a better team. And you're going to get better division rivals ranking because you've got a better team. You're going to make more money in the long run from spending it now than waiting. And more importantly, let's say let's say you spent, I don't know, 10,000 FIFA points. Let's say you, I don't know, you somehow get good packs and you, you want to buy a Neymar. Let's say when a game comes out, Neymar is 300k. Now, in September, the first week or early access, it might be 300k. But in November time, this guy's probably going to be 700, 800k. You see the point I'm trying to say? So you're still going to be making money in the long run by spending points early on. And that's kind of my take on it. As I said, that's kind of my take on it. That I would definitely, if you were, if you were, I'm not saying I could do it, but if you were to buy points, definitely buy early on in the year. 
If you are a good player, obviously go for draft. If not, go for the 7.5k pack with a 150 pack. Um, but obviously there's no guarantee, as I said, that your pack, you could pack nothing. Um, I would say go watch some of these big streamers op pack openings and kind of formulate your own opinion on whether it's worth it. That's what I would say. I would strongly advise you to do that. Um, one thing I would say is obviously if you're in, if you have the, if you don't have the early access, obviously it might be worth getting it. You know, if you haven't got, the, if you haven't pre-ordered it yet, get the ultimate edition. Try to, uh, you, you get, if you order through the menus, you get 10% off. If you order through here, I think if you go to Foot Central, um, I think it's Foot Central, and then you go over here or something like that, something like this, or you or you back out also of Ultimate Team. I think when you back out of Ultimate Team, you get additional 10% off. So you get 20% off e with EA Access, and of course you get the free packs as well if you pre-order through this. So you get 10% off Ultimate Edition plus you get EA Access 10% off. So you get it for the same price as the Championship Edition. But of course, I would definitely go with. Most definitely go with uh, at least a pre-order one. It might cost you a lot, a bit more money now, but you get packs over 12 weeks. Uh, and more importantly, it's the early access which gives you the most money. Anyway, guys, that's kind of my opinion. That's kind of my take. Um, as I said, that's kind of the way to go about it. I would hope if you have any questions, let me know in the comment section down below. Of course, you can transfer. So let's say if you put points in FIFA 19, let's say I got like 5k left over right now on the top left corner. If you want to transfer that to FIFA 20, you can. When you go to FIFA 20 for the first time, you load it up on your console. You'll get a message prompting you, do you want to transfer coins? You can do. You can only do it one time, and that's the way you transfer coins. Anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments section down below. Thanks very much for watching. Take it easy, boys, and I'll catch you in the next one.